morning amen we worship you lord god out of a pure heart on this morning amen hallelujah jesus worship the lord on this morning make known your request through your worship body of christ make known your request through your thanksgiving on this morning lord we thank you lord god we thank you jesus oh god because you are the chief cornerstone you are the solid rock oh god and father god we thank you most of all because you have chosen this generation oh god a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people come on somebody a called out nation an elected nation an appointed nation an anointed people of god amen Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We praise you because of your goodness on this morning, Lord God. We love you because you first love us, oh God. So we ask you, Lord, create within us a clean heart. Renew within us a right spirit. We believe you to remove malice. We believe you to remove bitterness. We believe you to remove jealousy, envy, and strife in the mighty name of Jesus. We desire the word, oh God, on this morning so that we can go and grow. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we believe you to build up this spiritual house, this holy place, this temple of the Holy Ghost. Pitch us inside and outside in the name of Jesus. Fill this tabernacle with your Holy Spirit. Fill
fill us with your word so that we can overflow in the mighty name of Jesus. We offer up today a sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of worship, a sacrifice of prayer, and a sacrificial thanksgiving. Amen. Anybody excited on this morning, body of Christ? Who believed the report of the Lord on this morning? Who believed the report of the Lord on this morning? Who believed that they are the healed of the Lord on this morning? Glory be to God. Lord, we need you to increase us. Enlarge our territory. Impact us with your glory. Thy kingdom come on this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank you that the mission, the goal, and the purpose still stand in Shekinah glory. Glory powerhouse, Lord God. So help us. Help us to build again. Help us to build this fortified place called Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. Amen. Body of Christ, I believe God to bring great change in the body of Christ in this season. Trust God. Accept your process. Go forward in his great name. Amen. Praise you the Lord. Hallelujah. Give God a praise. Oh, y'all out of gas already. I knew I wore y'all out in pre-service. Y'all ain't made for the trip. Y'all made to run to the store and pick up something. But I need somebody ready to go cross country to get a package. I need somebody to understand it's going to take some time to get there sometime. Everything ain't a short trip. Huh? Somebody say, God, I thank you. Come on, say, Lord, I thank you. Enter the gates with what? Thanksgiving. That court with what? Praise. See, you got to know who you are. You got to know where you at. I'm sorry, we didn't come to, the day we didn't come to load your own. You got to already be on board. I said, you got to already have your ticket, and you got to be on board. Is that all right? The plane don't take off. Are y'all hear me? Until the passengers are seated and in place. Seat belts on, and they ready to go. Am I right? Y'all want us to take off while y'all still trying to load. We don't want no separatism in here. One united people. Say that. Say it again. One united people. One united praise. And it's all to the glory of God. 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 You were created for his glory. You were created 
for God's glory. You were created for God's glory. You were created for God's glory. You say, I, I was created for God's glory. I was created for God's glory. Come on. I was created for God's glory. Spit it out. I was created for God's glory. 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 Come on, give God a praise. Give God a praise. We're moving forward. We're not, we're not anticipating, we're not anticipating being here long today. We gonna give, we came to give God some glory and to give God some praise. To give God some honor. But we're entering in with thanksgiving. God has blessed so many people and He's done so many things that have not been talked about. He's blessed so many and they're walking around and you know many are walking and they're downtrodden and sad because they think God has forgotten them but there's a song that they sing that says God has not forgotten tell you never God hasn't forgotten you but you probably forgot him all you have to do is look at your general attitude toward him your general disposition how important is he through the week Oh, he's God on Sunday for most of you all because it's a form of godliness and you've denied his power. But we have a word of testimony today. Brother Jakari, come on up. God bless you. Mic check, mic check. How everybody doing this morning? It's good to see y'all. I know I've been on a little vacation. Certain situation happened where I had to leave. Y'all don't know. I just had another beautiful baby girl. I want to thank y'all for uh, all your prayers. Ask the First Lady, Minister Thompson. Y'all, some real ones. Cause what? It's been kind of not rough. I'll say. I'll just say. It's a new change when you have two little kids like that. So it's different, but we 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 making it happen for sure. But I just want to say thank you to God because two of my friends, you know, they were having kids also, but both of them, their babies passed away. So you know, it's it's tough when um, you go through something like that. And I'm just thankful, you know, we don't know that experience but it does happen so you gotta, gotta be thankful for everything um, I just want to thank God for helping me make it you know 10 months out of the year you know two more to go on to 2022 test so I'm going to pass that tomorrow John, come on and sing this song for me.
excellent, he's excellent. Oh, come on, praise us, he's excellent. When my praise us at home, when my praise us at home, he's an excellent God. We don't sing for entertainment value. We sing to let God know he gave us a voice to give him praise. Somebody ought to thank God by telling him, God, you are an excellent God. You are an excellent God. Wondrous in power, mighty in your deeds. Power, strength, and glory belongs to thee. You're an excellent God. You're an excellent God. You're an excellent God. You're an excellent God. He's an excellent God. He's an excellent God. He's an excellent God. I was listening to a pastor preach. And he said, we don't waste the praise. When there's a chance to praise him, we praise him. I believe we need to get by 45 right here. We don't waste the praise.
I can tell some of y'all ain't never been sick. I can I, I know you haven't. I can tell. Or either you didn't receive your healing because you're too busy on a nine-month rotation plan with your medicine. But you won't put no faith to the finished work of the cross. And with his stripes, I'm healed. I'm not I'm not I'm not telling anybody don't take your medicine. Because your level of faith may not be where you can trust the healing. But you get mad when your 90 day supply don't come in. But what about your 90 day supply of faith? Yeah. And if you don't even have faith for God to heal you, you ought to have faith that he is God. Yeah. Are y'all not hearing me? Oh, it's weighted out there. Now y'all didn't like what I said, 90 day people. Trust the mailman. Trust FedEx to bring you what you think going to help you. All it's going to do is delay. But there's a power from God that will heal your body, not only your body, it will heal your mind. Somebody need mind healing today. Somebody need peace that comes from God. I said, somebody need the peace that comes from God. The peace that passes all, all of your understanding. Aren't you glad we serve a God who doesn't deal with us according to ourselves? You know, God loves us so much that oftentimes he'll put an eraser in his hand. And as soon as you write on the table of your heart what you've done, he, he goes and he begins to erase it and say, because you called it on yourself, I'm going to remove it from you. That's the faith we have to have in God, that we trust repentance. I need you to look at somebody and tell them, you're a mess and you know you're a mess. It's all right. Tell them, you're a mess and you know you're a mess. It's all right. Tell them, it's all right. It's all right. Because God is doing a work. I say, this is a construction zone. I wish I had somebody who know the truth. Your life is nothing but a construction zone where you're being built. Come on now. Some things are being torn down. Some things are being fortified. But you're being built, and God is going to get some glory out of your life. Somebody ask God to get glory out of their life. Somebody ask God, God, get some glory out of my life. God, will you please get some glory out of my life? God, my story is not that good, but will you get some glory out of my life? God, I've done some things, but can you get some glory out of my life? God, I trust in you, but will you get some glory out of this life? I'll look at somebody tell them my life is not a wasted vessel. My life is not a wasted vessel. Somebody counted you out. The question is what they counted. The question is what do you count? You can count me out, but I count me in. Is there any in people in here? Any in people, I know y'all tired, y'all ready to sit down. I was looking at that and I was kind of laughing to myself. I say, when I'm looking, I can't see on online, but I can see out here. And I say, well, my goodness, I guess it's a lot of over 50s out there. Yes, right. And they acting like they over 50. They praise ought to be like they in their 30s. Caleb said, at 85, I'm as strong now as I was then. A Caleb anointing is written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scripture, might have a hope. There's a renewed hope. There's a renewed hope. Somebody say, all right. 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 
will be all right. Things, come on with me. We'll be all right. Things will be all right. Things will be all right. Spit out things will be all right. Spit it out. Things will be all right. 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 Y'all dragging out everything. Come on, come on. This ain't, this is not a 33. This is a 45. Y'all know about album records. Yeah, yeah. Don't drag it, all y'all hear me? Listen to the melody. Things will be all right. 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 Ah. I am all right. I am all right. I am all right. I am all right. Give God a praise. 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 What you're playing, keep playing what you're playing. I need somebody that's singing background for me to sing this for me. I'm gonna sing it for you first. Don't drag it, singing in the melody and the rhythm that I'm singing it, but singing in your voice. everything but I'm thankful for everything in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you somebody else say I had to go through it say it again I had to go through it the Lord will perfect those things concerning Say your name, say your name, say your name, say your name. And I say, I didn't like it, but I had to go through it because God was perfecting something in say your name. Say it again, I didn't like it, but I had to go through it. I don't like it, but I got to go through it. Cause some of you still in it. Oh, I done messed up now. 
I done messed up now. I done messed up now. I done messed up now. Did I call them out? Woo! Yeah, you done lost them, Pastor. You gave them a truth. I gave them a truth. Will y'all help me sing it? Pastor messed up now. 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 He called the truth. He called the truth. And they didn't like it. And they didn't like it. He called the truth. He called the truth. And they didn't like it. And they didn't like it. Pastor messed up now. 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 Give me a groove. I might rap. I might start rapping. I'm, I feel I can rap. No, I ain't gonna try. We moving forward. We moving forward. Give God some glory. Give God some glory. Hallelujah. Got one more testimony. One more testimony. We got a microphone season. And here we got one more testimony. God should get some glory out of this story. God gets glory out of all of our stories, out of our testimony, out of our battles, out of our conflicts, out of our, we don't win every time, but because sometimes it's a battle that's in the war. <laughs> yeah. I'm teaching deeper than what y'all hearing. You don't win every time because you're saved. Did they lose the AI? I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be in the book. I'm just going to stay in the book. Did AI whip them? But they consulted God, and after consulting God, they came back and they whipped AI. Because they felt like they didn't need God's advice. They felt like they didn't need God to reinforce their forces. So they went to a smaller force, they saying, hey, we can take them out. Because we're good and we're strong and we outnumber them. But there are times God will let you lose to show you who you are. I said, there are times God will let you suffer so that you can grow. Uh, Christ had to suffer. Y'all not hear me. And the book says he suffered without the gate, outside of the gate. He, he, he suffered for us. He suffered on our behalf. Y'all don't like what I'm saying now. Y'all want church to always be about relief. But sometimes church got to be about instruction that tell you you got to go through some things. But out of all of them, God will deliver you. I don't see how you can get to Psalms 34 and 19 and not understand what it says. The first word is many. Well, many don't mean few. Many means what? Many. Ah, oh, the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Oh. You should look around the room, smile at about three people, tell them you got to go through. You probably went through, but you're also going to go through. When your mind is in a preparatory state that you understand that I have to shift and not stay where I was, but come, and you know what I'm saying, to come to where God is at. Come into the presence of Almighty God and realize that God will show you what you need. He'll give you what you need. He'll give you what you need. You need. I was talking to Deacon Banks earlier in the week. He had a testimony of Thanksgiving. I believe it needs to be shared with the body of Christ. You know that. Because God is always deserving of the glory. I know people, they be like, I don't want to ask because then he'll be looking at me funny and everybody think I'm some kind of way I am. Everybody think I'm hard. I am, but I'm fair. But I'm more loving and compassionate than I am hard. But I am hard. But I don't back up off of it. God is God. And God loves us. And I believe that God put me here because he knew that you needed somebody <laughs> strong enough to handle you. Because tell you, I'm strong. Yeah. Come on, tell them I'm, I got a strong personality. I wish I had real people. Come on, say, I got a strong personality. But he put me on the pastor. 
that's indifferent to my ways. That's what you need. See, it offsets. It brings balance. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's kind of glorious. Body of Christ. The movie put me on the spot. Woo. <laughs> well, I was talking to Pastor this weekend. Been listening to all his, all his words and everything. He's been talking about increase. He's saying some of us going to get six figures. Some of us going to get three dollars. Some of us going to get two dollars. Lo and behold, I was in that two dollar range. <laughs> and I thank God for it. I was like, Lord, because they kept saying everybody going to get raises. I'm talking to my wife, Sandy, she said, I said, I'm looking about maybe 50 cents, maybe a dollar. But then he said, no, it's $2. So I said, thank the Lord. And then all of a sudden, I was saying, you know, but I listened to Pastor Simmons, got to praise. And some said to me, he said, Michael, you going to give him a praise? I said, I bet if he told you to do the macarena, I bet you'll praise him. I said, God, I said, God, no, Holy Spirit, I'm going to give him a little praise. So I gave him a little praise. I thank you. I thank God for the increase. I thank Pastor for speaking the increase. I just thank this ministry all in a whole because this is the word itself says it. Powerhouse. That says it all right there, power. And if you don't receive power when you walk through those doors, and as you leave out, I can't, I can't explain it. It's something that you have to obtain. And, you know, it's a song that I can't ex obtain it and I can't explain it. But I know the will of God is powerful, the Holy Spirit. I'm going to quote one of my old soul brothers, the James Brown. He said, Jesus said, I'm going to send you the big payback, which is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the big payback. So if you're not receiving him, you're not getting your payback. I want mine all. I'm greedy. I'm greedy. My wife tell you I eat a whole meal. I walk and eat all day long. So, Lord, I tell him, keep feeding me. Keep feeding me your word. Holy Spirit, keep dwelling in me and just let me eat. I am hungry. I can't speak for you, but if you don't want yours, pass your plate to me. I will munch on it. I just want to say thank God for the increase. Thank, thank Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. Thank Pastor Billy Joe Davis and his congregation because they have seen some work in this spirit right here. Woo! And I, when I say spirit, I mean spirit. Woo-wee! Was, was I bad? Oh, yes, sir. But thank God I didn't shed some things off on rebuilding. But I do thank everybody here. Thank Minister Thompson. She's always, she's always diligent all the time, you know. Thank Minister Woolley for always interceding. Thank Pastor David. So I'm going to get down, but I want to still say thank God for the increase. Bless you. God of praise. Give God a praise. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's offering time in the house. Oh, yeah, it's offering time. Before we give our offering, before we give our offering, let me work with you a minute. Let me get my instructions out here. I had something that I guess that the enemy thought was negative yesterday, and he thought that I would go into a, a shell with it, and I'm the opposite of when something happened. I, <laughs> I processed that, and this didn't happen. I got to move on. But while I was moving on, the Lord allowed me to get a piece of wisdom. I got this up because some of you sitting at home never partake of anything, but I want you to be a partaker of the day. And I want 10 people sitting at home right now. You see our Cash App? You see our Givelify down there? I want you to use Cash App or Givelify. I want 10 people to sow $10. Even if you're in the house, listen to my instructions. I want 10 people to sow $10. I want five people to sow $20. What did I just say? Ten people to sow what? Ten dollars. Five people to sow twenty dollars. I want four people to sow fifty dollars. I want three people to sow a hundred dollars. And I want one person who will sow two fifty or more. Let me read that again for you. I want ten people who will sow ten dollars. I want five people who will sow twenty dollars. I want four people who will sow fifty dollars. 
And I want three people who will sow $100 and one person who will sow $250 or more. These are our cash apps assignments. Everybody here, everybody at home, I want you to participate in it. We want to do what God has given us instruction to do. I'm doing this by divine instruction. So I ask that you will hear what I'm saying. Stop being cheap because you only rob yourself. Give God a praise. It's offering time. You may bring your offerings. Come on. God, we thank you. We praise you, God. God, you're the God that answered by fire. And God, I thank you, God, that as you open door and opportunity, God, for those to give through the airways, that they'll hear what you said. That 10 people will sow $10, five will sow $20, four will sow $50, three will sow $100, and one will sow $250 or more. I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it being done in advance. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Give God that praise. Come on, give God that praise. Now, I don't expect to hold that sign up about two or three more times. And after that, I expect us to be able to be them purchase the piece of equipment that puts it online. Because there's a piece of equipment that I can purchase. I'm going to need y'all to help me get it. It's about a $1,200 item. And I'm going to need an operator back that operator. Yeah. And we, we, 
because I, I'll do things basic to start with. But that's not what this is for. So don't say, well, we gave it this. And no, don't do that. Put it in your mind. Don't be like, well, they got a whole awful lot going. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't start talking about it. Don't start trying to mix the appreciation in with this, that, and the other. Y'all knew all year October was coming. I'm not going to sit here and push anything you already know. I know what's given. I know I know all of everything. So don't be, don't be delusional. I'm getting ready to teach a word, though. And there is a word from the Lord. By letting it go. Letting it go with God's help. Sometimes the people of God allow themselves to get in situations where they don't know how to let it go. And the reason that they don't let know how to let it go is that they've taken on offense. They become offended by something and that offense, that seed of offense has caused a root of bitterness to grow on the inside of them. And the Bible tells us that the root of bitterness has a tendency to spring up. It will spring up out of nowhere. But that root of bitterness also brings with it fruits. Somebody say fruits. And when fruits come and when things come to work against us, we have to realize that it's time for us to address it. You have to refuse to be offended. I've talked this to you for the last at least eight to ten years that you have to take offense. You have to receive offense. The Bible tells you in Matthew 18, you will be offended, but it doesn't tell you you have to deposit it. You don't have to deposit every offense that is going to come. If the Bible said that offenses are going to come, they're going to what? Tell you, you're not that special. You're not, you're not, you're not all, none of us all of that. And I, I, I know that a lot of people tend to say that, you know, pastor offended me. Did I offend you or did I shoot you the truth? And if the truth offended you, you got to work on you. Because if you talk to me again, guess what my answer is going to be? And so when you start multiplying your offenses without them being merited, <laughs> they're just emotional. It will cause you to displace yourself. I'm going to teach the word. It's all right. Y'all looking at me strange right now, but I should have about three fire starters out there. Where are my fire starters at? Fire starters, keep your eyes looking out. Don't make your eyebrows come in. The way you're looking like, I don't even know what he's talking about. Don't look guilty. Are you hearing me? One of the first things I learned from Pastor Dollar, and this was in the 90s, mid-90s, Pastor Dollar told us when that word started hitting you, you be there excited like, it ain't me, but it's me, but it ain't me. You not going to look at my face and know that it's me. Are y'all hearing me? So you have to learn how to make your face not show your heart. Are y'all hearing me? Because it's the same way when somebody make you mad. They shouldn't be able to be able to read it. Or they'll keep doing it. They'll be like, ooh, struck a nerve. Allow me to teach you. Let us pray, Father God. We thank you for a word. A fit word, a right word, God spoken in season to manifest glory in your people's lives. God, I thank you for keeping us, for showing us who we were and who we are. That we may become the vessels, the vehicles that you called us to be, that you will forever receive glory out of our lives. And I say thank you. Thank you, God, for allowing me through grace and through mercy. But even more than that, I combined it, God, with time and chance to be the pastor of this great house. 
So God, I thank you for this great commission called Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. I thank you for your manifested works that's being done in it. I thank you for your manifested works that's being done through your people. Take all of the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and tell them, Pastor trying to make us. Tell them some Pastor is trying to make us. Get past Sunday morning tradition. So many of you, you start on Saturday night wondering what you're going to wear on Sunday. And then you take out nothing. And then Sunday morning come and you try to put it on and all of a sudden you act like a revelation came. That you can't wear it no more. When it should have been a Saturday night discovery. Are y'all not hearing me? And so your day begins rough because all of a sudden you go into frantic mode. What am I going to wear now? And you make that part of how you come into God's house. You're frustrated at you for how you have become. God didn't eat that pork chop. God did not eat that extra piece of chicken. God did not order double sides. Ooh, oops, ooh, ooh, oops. <laughs> he didn't order those things, and, and yet you thought you could just keep doing it over and over and over without consequence. Well, there are consequences to everything. I'm trying to move you past Sunday morning tradition because I want you to see this. I believe this is, if you don't get anything else, take this nugget. It's not a scripture, it's just a nugget. You're going to remember, you ain't got to write it, you're going to remember this one. Trust me. For some of you coming to church on Sunday morning and for others tuning in on Sunday morning, I'm going to tell you what it's like. Have you ever been riding with someone and they tell you, I got to make a couple of stops? And you in your head, you hear them say, I got to make a couple of stops, but you're not driving but in your head, you like, mm, mm, mm. you like, I should have drove. I should have just met him there. Am I right? I, I, I don't want to make these stops, but I got to make these stops. And on Sunday morning, a lot of you all know the destination. But instead of coming into the presence of God on your own, you want to ride with somebody else not knowing that they had to make some stops. And for many of you on Sunday morning, for many of you on Sunday morning, please hear me, don't take offense, but if you do, that's fine. Uh, many of you on Sunday morning, it's like riding with that person and they told you, I got to go by the bank. And when they go by the bank, you over there in the passenger seat and you hear them say, uh, yeah, I like to take out $1,000. And you sitting over there with $8.32 in your pocket. And all of a sudden, you're sitting there and you're listening. And they're taking out of their account what they have. And you looking into your account at what you don't have. Same trip, different perspective. And many of you, when you come to church, you're so busy looking at what somebody else have. And what you don't have, that you forget to render God praise. You forget that you ought to praise God for your eight dollars and your thirty-two cents. You should. The Bible says it's not wise to compare yourself with others, but He said if you're going to make a comparison, compare spiritual things with spiritual things. I don't want to. Watch somebody go to the, I don't want to ride to the bank with nobody. I don't want to see what nobody, I don't want to do it. I'm going to tell them I don't want to do it. It's coming out of my mouth because I, I, I don't even like riding with people. Because I like to get where I got to go and get on back. I'm not trying to be selfish or anything. But so many of you on Sunday morning, you come to make a withdrawal. But you haven't even opened up your faith account. 
and you wanting God to let you go home with something when you haven't even applied for faith for that. My message to you today, and I just gave you more wisdom than I, than I can give, it, but you need to open your faith account. And then you need to make some faith deposits. You need to make some faith confessions. You need to begin to give God some glory and to let God know that my circumstances, my circumstances do not reflect my promise. Oh, my goodness, leave that alone, Pastor Davis. Let me get back to letting it go with God's help. How do you move past being offended? Well, yesterday morning when I started prayer, I was working on the people of God to try to get them to understand that you must remove yourself from the spirit of anger. Too many angry saints. If I could say a word over the air without getting in trouble, I would say it, but I'm not going to say it. Too many saints running around. I think of God. Thank you for. I think I can safely say it this way. Too many saints running around po'd and don't know why they po'd. But somebody got to pay because they po'd. You got Sunday morning saints walking in and won't speak to nobody and wanting God to move through the house. They come in and they taint the environment that we spent time praying up. You bring your little haughty spirit in. Oh, leave that alone, Pastor David. You bring your little divisive spirit in and you think you're right. I come to tell you right now, God going to judge you in a minute. And after a while, you ain't going to be able to walk up in here. Because God is not going to let you be divisive. You're not greater than the mission. You're not greater than the call. And nobody cares about your little petty feelings. Now that's what people don't like when I say that. But I'm here to tell you right now, God didn't send me here to pacify your feelings. He sent me here to give you a truth. And to help you to grow. And to help you to mature. And in order for me to do that, I got to step on your feelings. But I'll step on your feelings all day long if it's going to turn out a better you. I'm for the better man, not the other man. They don't, they don't like me today. They don't like me. Y'all like me on, y'all like me on there? Uh, even if you don't, my truth is still coming today. I can work this in my sermon, but the Bible says don't be angry. Ecclesiastes 7 and 9, he says, don't be hasty in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of a fool. That's one of the first scriptures I learned. Dr. Dollar taught us that in the 90s. Anger rests in the bosom of a fool. That told me that as long as I allow anger to companion my soul, I'm a fool. That's where I taught it to myself. I'm just teaching you how I taught myself how to deal with anger. Therefore, I gave no place to anger because it rests in the bosom of a fool. The Bible says in Psalm 14 and 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But Ephesians 4 and 26 tells us a way that we can emotionally deal with what we're dealing with. He said, be ye angry but sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Well, I'm not teaching good, but I'm talking to some angry saints. Angry at me. Angry at the church. Angry at their finances. Angry at their health. Angry at their children. Angry at their family. Just angry, angry, angry. And all of that anger equates to ignorance a lack of knowledge my job is to help you to deal with yourself ask them, I look around the room and ask somebody are you an angry fool ask them, ask them, ask them are you an angry fool because after a while, see now if somebody just caught, came up and called you a fool you'd be mad but the Bible already told you I ain't gonna rest 
Oh, y'all didn't like that. The Bible already told you offenses are going to come. No need for you to get mad because somebody called you a word. You know how many times I've been called an N word? You're not going to describe me. I'm going to describe you. You call me N word, I'll call you, I'll put an I G N O R A N T on it. And I just say, you're ignorant. <laughs> you don't even know me. I refuse to let somebody denigrate me. I know who I am in the Lord. And I'm looking for people who know how to stand in the face of adversity, who, 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 who know that look. Why am I angry? Because that's my job today to get you to ask yourself, why am I angry? How was I offended? Why am I allowed on that offense to still have power in my life? Why am I allowing these people to be able to control me? And I call it remote control. That your mind processing why they done went on with their life, you still processing what they did with you. They got remote control over your emotions. You don't even know how to grow or go. I'm not teaching well today, but I'm just about through. <laughs> If you thought I was going to be long today, you thought wrong. You know, when something is unpleasant, they try to make the process as quick as possible. Or either they put you to sleep. Am I right? I can't put you to sleep. So I got to make this as quick as possible. We're not going to like everything about anyone. You don't like everything about yourself. I don't have real people. Boy, it's quiet up in here. Uh, I, the saints are on mute. Can somebody take the saints off mute in the house? Unmute. Oh, oh, there it is right there. Unmute, unmute. unmute. I, I said there are some offended people in the house. There are some angry people in the house. And you don't even know why. It's been 10 years, it's been 20 years, it's been 30 years, it's been 40 years, and you still mad at them for what they did. They didn't do it right. They wasn't there. They didn't support me. They never pushed my goals. They never tried to help me to develop. Me, 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 and what? Only me. <laughs> huh? got to move beyond that. Insecure Christians have untrue or unrealized expectations because they base them on their insecurities. You want God to have vengeance on somebody? How are you going to have vengeance on them and your heart is not right? He said vengeance is mine. That's why he said vengeance is mine because when your heart reflects his heart, then vengeance speaks for you. Vengeance cannot speak for you when you're being retaliatory. Vengeance cannot speak. Y'all not hearing me? I'm not teaching well today. I'm not teaching well today, but I'm going to reach somebody. Okay, now he's here for five people, five people, five in the building and about 50 of y'all out there. <laughs> you sit here, you're just mad, and you don't even know why you're mad, and, and you're, you want somebody to come. You wanted me to get up here and talk about Daniel in the lion den. I'm going to tell you where the lion den at. The lion den is that emotion that you're still carrying that's 20 years old, and you don't even know why you still got it. And then when you look at the person, you still got the nerve to automatically roll your eyes and to say to yourself, I wish they would speak. But you're supposed to be the born again Christian. You're supposed to have where well, you died to old things. They're supposed to have passed away and all things have become new. But all of a sudden, we're looking at you and finally God allow y'all intercessions to pass to see if you're going to show maturity, if you're going to show the love of Christ, if you're going to show the grace of Christ. And instead, you go back into your natural self to get PO'd one more time 20 years later and you don't know why. I come to tell somebody you need to let it go with God's help. You gotta say, God help me to let it go. God help me to let it go. It did happen. The offense did come. The Bible told you they were gonna come. But the Bible also told you to let it go. 
Somebody said, let it go. Let me help you out. Your expectation and your timing are not going to marry all the time. Sometimes it's going to be a long engagement. Y'all didn't hear me? But you got to remain faithful. Huh? In your patience, possess ye your souls. There he means control your emotions while you're having to wait. Stop being bitter. Y'all know my words. Negative Nancy. Negative Ned. Hmm? Petty Betty. Petty Eddie. Stop being them. Stop trying to find a reason to be upset with somebody and find a reason to forgive somebody. Find a reason to open up your heart and say, God, I, to this, this week, I choose to practice forgiving. I choose to let it go. I'm making a choice. You should not let other people control your life. I'm not teaching well today. I'm not teaching well today. No, 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 I'm not teaching well today because I'm looking at y'all faces. Is a negative Nancy out there? Oh, Petty Betty, I see you. I finished teaching Pastor Davidson. Let him go. Let it 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 go. I said I integrate this into the sermon this morning because I was putting like my favorite words. I was not only shocked. But I was appalled. I was shocked and appalled at what I saw on Rocket Top. I was shocked and appalled. I'm looking at a football game, and it turned almost basically into a riot. Where they didn't like a call, and they began to hurl stuff on the field. 102,000 people were there. And they were ignorant. It didn't delay the game for three minutes. It didn't delay the game for 10 minutes. It didn't delay the game for 15 minutes. It didn't delay the game for 20 minutes. They went closer to 30 minutes with ignorance. Pastor, why are you talking about that? Because anger controlled the crowd. And they were spontaneous in their actions. None of them, I'm sure, well, maybe the one with the golf ball did. <laughs> but I don't think too many of them went to the game saying, you know what, I'm going to throw stuff on the field. I don't think too many of them went with that. But as soon as anger rose up on the inside of them, they responded. Why did I bring that up? Because I had something that I was going to teach, and I'm still going to teach it to you. I got the three minutes to get this out. You know, when you play in football, somebody say football. And I know that most of y'all ladies out there, so I know y'all don't know anything about the rules and all that stuff, but it's a few of y'all that do. But there's something that has become, I guess you can say, uh, popular in, in the modern culture playing football. And it's called an RPO, uh -huh. the run pass option. Yes, RPO, somebody say RPO. RPO. Say it again, an RPO. RPO. A run pass option. This means that the quarterback has the option to either let a running back run the ball, he can run the ball, or he can pass the ball. He has an option. He's not stuck with one play. <laughs> he has three. It's one play call, but he got several. Somebody said run pass option. I'm going somewhere with it. 
So he can run with it? He can run with it. Say that. And you can run with your offenses. <laughs> you can run with your anger. He can pass it. You could have passed that anger. You could have passed it back to where it was coming from. You could have passed that offense. You had the option. But you held on to the ball. And you got sacked by your emotions. You lost yardage because you didn't get rid of your offense and you didn't get rid of your anger, y'all. Are y'all hearing me? You, you see, there's something common to an RPO. The main thing that's common to the RPO, boy, I feel like I could preach this thing. I, I, I believe I could really preach this this morning. Oh, yeah. The thing that's common to an RPO is the football. See, the whole game is about a piece of pig skin. But you got 22 combatants trying to make a decision on who's going to win some pig skin. And it's the RPO that only has a chance when you're on offense. But every time somebody is on offense, there's another 11 men on defense. So if you thought you were just going to walk through this Christian wall without something coming up against you, I come to tell you you're wrong. So my message to you today is you are the quarterback. And God said you got to get up under the center. And you got to get ready to run the play. But you got to scout your defense to know what play you're going to call. You got to play. Are y'all hearing me? And you can hold on to it if you want to. Or you can pass it on if you want to. Or you can give it to somebody else if you want to. But you got to make a decision. But the only way you're going to make a decision is by first handling the ball. Somebody say you got to take a clean snap. But you can only take a clean snap when you walk up and you survey the defense. When you survey the defense and the defense look like they lined up to stop you from going. There's something that a quarterback has. It's called an option, and that option is the audible. You're not hearing me. I'm talking to some believers who understand. They looked at it, and they saw the enemy over there. They saw the enemy over there. They saw the enemy right there, and they came to the line, and they said, this play ain't going to work right now, so let me call an audible. Uh, let me option out of this. Uh, so I'm going to give another sign. Come on, help me out. Help me out. I, I know Mike know the word. What, what, what's the word uh, uh, Manning used to say? Peyton Manning's favorite word was? Omaha. Let's hear it right up. He walk up there here, look at him and say, Omaha. Omaha let his people know we finna shift the play. And then right behind Omaha, he going to tell them what he shifted to. I come to tell somebody today. You came in with one state of mind, but instead of saying Omaha, I'm going to say Jesus. Uh, and so I'm calling for Jesus, for somebody who's going to reset their offense, who's going to let go of their offense, who's going to pass it on, who's going to let God get some glory out of their life. Uh, that person ought to know it's time for you to call an audible and say Jesus. Uh, say Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Jesus, I got to let it go. I got to let it go. I saw where that defense was holding my finances back. I saw where that defense uh, was holding my healing back. I saw where that defense was holding my peace back. But I'm calling an audible today. I'm crying Jesus. Uh, I'm crying Jesus. I'm crying Jesus. I told you there's 11 people on the team, and I wonder how many of y'all in position 
who's in position to catch a pass from the Holy Spirit. Who's in a position to make a run on behalf of the Holy Spirit? Who's in a position to give God some glory right now? Who's in a position to say, I shall win, I shall win, I shall win. I have the testimony of an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm coming from behind, but I give God the glory. I was behind for a while, but God has given me grace, and God has given me mercy, and God has lifted me up, and God drafted me, and he put me on the right team. It's a team called believers. It's a team where the people operate by faith. Somebody say, I'm on the right team now. Tell them I'm on the right team now. Yes, I'm on the offensive side because I got to go forth in the name of Jesus. We're going to pass this thing on. If somebody will just throw a pass and say, glory, a pass of glory. I pass glory your way. I pass peace your way. I pass provision your way. I pass healing your way. Throw that pass. Throw that pass. If somebody else will move from quarterback and understand that they are a receiver and that they'll set themselves up to catch a pass of peace, to catch that pass called prosperity, to catch that pass called healing. Somebody ought to catch that pass. Do you know how to receive a pass? Tell them you gotta catch it. Don't try to palm it with one hand. Don't try to be fancy. Make a cup for it. But what they tell you, when you're a receiver, use your hand and don't let it touch your body. Use your hand and don't let it touch your body. I shall lay hands on the sick, but it won't touch my body. They shall recover. Use your hands, but don't let it touch your body. Saints, I got to get up out of here. I got to get up out of here. I went up past my time, but I give God the glory. I give him honor. I give him the praise because he is the Lord that heals me. He is the Lord that delivers me. He is the Lord that brings me peace. He is the Lord that gives me understanding. Some chariots, some horses, but Billy Davis will remember the name of the Lord. Is there anybody that will say, Jesus, I wish you would call the audible and just to help me out in the church, if you don't mind, and if you're not where you can't do it, don't do it, and you're going to fall now. But come on, act like you're coming up on the center. You got to squat a little bit. Tell you, you got to squat. And set your hand like they're getting ready to hike the ball to you. Come on now, call it, call it. Come on, call your audible. Say, Jesus, Jesus, call your audible, and then call for it to be passed to you. And give God that praise coming out of it. Give God a praise coming out of it. Give him that praise. Give him that praise. Hey! One last reminder, there are times when a pass is being thrown that the defense gets in position and they make an interception. And then you, who was on offense, all of a sudden you got to shift to defense. Tell your neighbor, I got to know how to play it both ways. I got to know how to receive, but I also got to know how to tackle. Y'all didn't hear me? So when the enemy comes in like a flood, I got to know how to tackle him. Tell him it stops right here. Tell him it stops right here. Because if you hit him right, you can make him fumble the ball back. 
Somebody say, hit him hard. Hit him hard. Woo! That's a praise. That's a right praise right now. I want you to hear this last set of instructions. Oh, yeah. If you didn't get anything else out of what I taught today, letting it go with God's help. The premise of my message was this. Stop coming to church to be a cheerleader and realize you're in the game. You're not second team. You're not third team. You're first team. You're a starter. But we all know. I don't care how good you are, you still got to practice. You got to study to show yourself approved under God. Work when that needs not to be ashamed. Well, you're able to rightly divide this word to become the essence of that very word that God has put on the inside of you. Boy, keep that up a little bit. Turn that up a little bit. Ooh, I feel that. Y'all know I'm, I got a little quartet on the inside of me. Y'all know that. Where my praise was at? I know I got some at home. I bet I got one in Alabama for sure. Where you at, Atlanta? Where you at, Atlanta? Hey! Where you at, Tampa? Tampa, where you at? Woo! Jacksonville. South Carolina, where you at? Connecticut. Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. We gotta come on out. We gotta come on out. Woo! 
I got to put a gift. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get out of here, but let me get me a little, a, a little piece of quartet. Clap, y'all don't mind, do you? Boy, you know, every time I hear that right there, you know I think about wheel. Y'all know, don't play with me. Huh? I just want to clap my hand. I, don't, I ain't, ain't going to say nothing. They're going to clap my hand. But I'm going to get that solid one in there. Everybody talking about your hand sound like you got two pieces of wood. I'm like, well, make yours sound like that. Get that cotton out your hand. Getting ready to get out of here. Wait, my, give me some side to side praises that know how to move them feet side to side. Give me some out there. Move them. Move them. Don't rest. Somebody ought to tell God, thank you right there. Thank you, God, for putting me on the right team. Thank you, God, for giving me opportunity. Thank you, God, for grace and mercy, time and chance. We give you praise, God. Again, I hold my sign up. Anybody feeling philanthropic and they want to go ahead and this has nothing to do with the $1,200 for the piece of instrumentation that we have that we need to be able, not only am I going to need the instrument, I got to have an operator. It requires somebody back there to operate it on. So it's not something we can preset. Ten people. How much? $10. Five people, $20. Four people, $50. Three people, $100. And one person, $250 or more. Let God touch your mind. You'll do what's right. Don't you listen to you. You'll rob your yeah. Father God, we thank you for showing up in our midst. We're thanking you, God, for your awesomeness but more than anything. We're thanking you, God, for that power that you gave us through your anointing. That power that we could take home with us, God. God, we thank you. God, you allow someone to pen these words. And this is the way that we believe in you and your son, Jesus Christ, that we are supposed to approach you just as I am with thy one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me and that thou biddest me come to thee O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot. To thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Saints, always be willing to grow in your spirit man 
we've outgrown ourselves naturally. That's our closets. Our closets will tell anybody, you know, that joker do not groom himself. Sitting there looking at a size 46 suit. What are you, where you going to put that on at? You know, if I were to put on a 46, I'm going to let y'all go, but y'all don't, like, don't like fun. I, I, I like to laugh myself because laughter is a medicine. <laughs> but, but, but can you imagine? One day I'm going to put on, put, on, put, on, put on one anyway, just see what y'all say. I'm going to put on a two little suit. And I'm going to come up in here strong, too. <laughs> and I'm going to watch how y'all look at me, and I'm going to look at y'all, look at me, and I'm be like, what? Pastor, no, he can't even breathe. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I learn, I laugh, I say, wow. 20 some years ago, God let you come home. You were stout 185. All pushing up on some 230, 240 now. Pro size. From wide receiver, I had to move inside to tight end. <laughs> and just too, just too, too big now. And I'm not picking at anybody. We all pick up weight. And I'm not picking at anybody. So if you take offense, that means you still got thin skin. Because I'm going to crack a joke. I'm, I'm going to crack a joke about me, you, and anybody else. Is that all right? Everybody okay? Again, I said you be obedient in that as I look. Because I always uh, kind of take an inventory about 5 o'clock. It would be a little earlier today that I'll take an inventory to see that, that, that we were obedient to God. That, that Because I'm, I believe that God doesn't miss. I know he doesn't miss. So as far as the overall figure that all of that equates to, I know it'll be there. Now for the number of people being obedient and compliant, I don't know about that. But I know many of you, if you're searching and you, you're trying to do whatever, I gave you cash app, I gave you give a pie. You have that if you're a believer, we, I guess we can leave the gate open for a minute, a little bit if you need to go to a tell or whatever. And that's all right, y'all all right? But sit, don't sit there and say you don't have what you have. Huh? All y'all hear me? Don't do that, okay? Father God, we thank you and we honor you. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Have a great day. God bless you. Powerhouse. Thank you for joining us at Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. We hope you are truly blessed by the message delivered on today and that you will join us next time in the Powerhouse. We are located at 1603 Fortune Avenue in Panama City, Florida, where Sunday services begin at 10.30 a.m., Wednesday night Bible study at 6.30 p.m., and Saturday morning prayer at 8 a.m. Connect with us on Facebook at Shekinah Glory Powerhouse or on YouTube at C-O-T-P-O-H to stay up to date on ministry concerns, issues, and projects. Support the ministry from home via Cash App at dollar sign S-G-P-H-W-E-L-L or with Givelify at Shekinah Glory Ministries, Panama City, Florida. This is Shekinah, where faith is personified, hope is actualized, and love is exemplified. Welcome to the Powerhouse.